We usually think that we listen by just using our ears, but it involves the body as a whole. Sound, as it moves through space and fills that space, touches every single cell in your body. Listening activates the entire nervous system evoking slight twitches of the muscles as we tune ourselves to what we hear. We become aware that our bodies and the space around us function as a single organism. We usually think that we listen to sounds coming from the world outside us, but everything we hear is happening inside us. My music is usually much harder, <laughs> like much harder. The sound is uh, much more intense. It's more about me, but with this work, I'm more of a vessel. With all this project, the symbols and the archetypes are very important and the geometries and what they mean. And it should be very like chaotic, but actually it creates something very balanced and beautiful, I think, to the ear. The audience is immersed in these repetition of chants, activating their chakras very intensely. All the parts are like playing for either three, six or nine minutes. So I was really working also with the three, six, nine sequence to see what it does to the perception and how it affects us. Rona Geffen, she is researching how we can create geometrical bodies of sound and what is the meaning in sound experience of different geometrical patterns. So we have been researching to create geometrical bodies of sound. She has been working with frequencies and compositions that, that uh, correlate to these uh, geometrical bodies of sound and the audiences immersed inside these. And this is a new way of, of creating, let's say, a sonic ritual. And on the other hand, it's also fundamental research into can we actually perceive these shapes? Um, do they have an effect on us? What kind of effect do they have on us? Can they make us feel better or feel different if we listen to sound in this way as opposed to in any other way? Um, so these are a lot of questions that Rona is bringing into the Institute and step by step we are researching uh, what can be done and what answers do we find uh, into this material. With this system you can do whatever I always imagined can be done with sound or most of what I always imagined can be done with sound. Like you can actually feel where the sound is. You definitely can feel it on your body. The Spatial Sound Institute uh, has a large scale 60 speaker 40 sound system. It creates 
three-dimensional sound images in the space. Uh, you can hear presences of sounds that are in the room, uh, but also out of the room. So the effect that people would usually have when they're in the room is that they hear sounds coming from all kinds of distances, all kinds of directions, but they don't really hear it coming from a defined actor, a speaker. Uh, it's kind of hovering in the space and taking its own presence. So it's, it's becoming kind of a sculptural process to work with sound in the room. Uh, and there's a, a huge amount of specific uh, aspects of how we listen spatially that you can control here so you can make it into a, uh, a creative process. I use it to create geometrical shapes and then to place people within geometrical shapes of uh, sound and the sounds are planetary sounds. Each shape they correspond with like a lot of things in nature and Fibonacci and golden ratio and how our body is constructed or in general how nature is constructed and they are always in like perfect proportions and they have their archetypes as well. Um, they seem to have some kind of a relation to, or we seem to have some kind of a relation to them. They are some kind of energetic key. The project is about sound healing or self-empowerment and self-healing. It is about geometry, math and their relation to sound and specifically sound healing and light and intention. And so it was obvious that I have to have a mathematician on board. I am Claire Glenoir. I am a postdoc and I am doing uh, mathematics, so research. I place the, I mean, the shapes uh, in the space and then computed the coordinates of uh, each uh, point, each line, each surface. And we were also starting to discuss about incorporating some physical concepts, some things related to nature, so maybe particular constants, uh, like the fundamental constant of the universe or some uh, things really important in physics or also some laws in physics like the, the forces of interaction and also the difference between the big scale what happened in the cosmic universe scale and the little uh, particle scale. So yeah, we were beginning to talk and to try to have idea about this. Okay. Or should we take just... Um, like the special delay in the system, it works that we have to specify for each speaker if, we, if I do processing patch, for instance, mm -hmm. the delay, so the compute for each speaker the distance. In general, in whatever you do, I think it's better to bring like a fuller take on everything and bring a fuller picture, so brought Alessandra on board, who is an amazing visual artist. Alessandra, I know her from uh, Female Pressure. Mm -hmm. and so it's a, Female Pressure is a network of electronic artists. So I know her work and I wanted to work <laughs> with her for a mm -hmm. long time. It's not easy to work with uh, such a rich um, system, rich in, in terms of like possibilities and stuff you, have, you can do with it. and. Uh, it's not just about looking at the projection, but it's feeling it, you know, in, in one way or another. So rather than having a frontal projection where that people could really be detached from and they would look at it, you know, it's more about being in the projection. I mean, yeah. being in the, inside the beam of inside light, so that's really important. That's why we really try hard to actually get this kind of uh, setup where the beamer is on top and you are actually able to be inside the beam of light. And the other thing is, it's not just about like the really simple, symmetrical shape, but in a way it ex expands in a lot of ways. You know, there is like, I think, a level of experience of people who actually come into the space and uh, hear the sound movings and they have to connect that with the geometry. There is a lot of factors involved. I think uh, it is really like also a multi-sensory kind of experience here.
a lot of people consider this project as spiritual, but <laughs> I don't think they mean it in necessarily a good way. But I think like we need to progress to that point where we combine science and ancient traditions and spirituality in the best of ways to evolve. I will try to do a bit of pictures, I mean at least some extract about the, the, the visual we did in the piece and the choice of them and a bit their relation. So the, the, the piece starts with a pyramid. So actually the projector is placed in top, so we see the projection of a pyramid, which is just then the basis, it's just a square. And from then to pass to the next shape, so the next shape would be a, a, a sphere. And so in, in a plane, if we cut in the middle, it would be a circle. And to relate them both, we, like, we took the, the ratio, so this is L of uh, Earth and Moon. So ima if you imagine that there is the Earth inside, so there, so this is, it means that this is the radius of the Earth, and then you draw the Moon above, and you have actually Moon divided by Earth. So when I say divided, it's, I mean the radius, is like 27.3 percent, so divided by one, 100, if you prefer. So actually calling this alpha, then for the next circle, so the next circle would be uh, this one. And the radius of the next circle, so if we take this r, little r, then we are r equal 1 plus alpha uh, times uh, l. So not exactly the l, but this r that we have the radius that we add, like here. So this, like we called um, uh, little a, for instance, a, and then we have times a. So that's very important in the whole piece to, to like really choose when we pass from one shape to the other, to really choose the ratio according to some uh, properties and particular numbers, like and related to other ratio appearing in nature. The idea was to bring, to make this project with women, also because the, the system itself is very masculine. I mean, it's run by men, it's built in a very masculine way. Since the project is about balance and expansion of consciousness, I really wanted to bring a lot of feminine energy into this. Today is the day my brother died. I realized it's the same date, like when they told me the date, I was like, oh, okay. But it's just, there is something, it's like that on your birthday, you're a bit happier or sadder, or I don't know, everyone takes it differently. But these dates, I mean, the day he fell and the day he died are, there is something about them, they're very hard dates. It's more than sound healing, I think it's a form of medicine that needs to be discovered and improved and used. 
And I'm doing this because I really think it can help people with uh, brain injuries. So for me, I'm doing it for my brother. I mean, I really hope that this works and then sometime in the future, hopefully not the very far future, we can actually save people like this. Because sound and light, these are two very basic vibrations uh, that we respond to, even if we don't really fully understand it yet. We are the same 